Logic Pro 101. If you're completely new to Logic or looking to gain a more fundamental understanding of the program, then this video is going to be great for you. In this video, I'm going to cover the overall layout of the program and how to get started with your first project. So if you have not opened Logic, this might be something similar to what your screen looks like. So go ahead and click on Logic. And if nothing happens, you'll need to go up here and hit File, New. So we'll just start there. I'll talk about templates in a later video. So when you get your session up for the very first time, you'll be presented this dialog box or something similar. It basically requires you to have one track to get started. So we'll go ahead and pick MIDI for now, just to have something and hit create. So this is sort of your main window, uh, main screen. This large area here is called the workspace. So anything you do, any content you're working on will be located here. Directly to the left of that, this is your tracks section. And now a track is basically a container or a lane for your content to go in. So if you're editing a podcast, that podcast audio needs to be in a track. Basically for every element in your project, you need some sort of lane or track to hold it. So those are the two most important areas. If you take nothing else from the video, learn those two. Up along the top, you have a ton of buttons and screens and all sorts of things. So I'm going to start over at the left and explain what each one does very briefly. So this very first one, this is your library panel. And this is going to open up a library within Logic of all of the included presets, patches, all of that kind of thing. So if you're looking for a certain sound or certain processing on your vocal, kind of already packaged up and ready to go, you'll go into this library to find it. This next button here is the inspector, and this is going to show a detail view of whatever track you have selected here. So I have my instrument one selected. It's my only track. And this is going to show all the detailed information just about that track. So if you need to make any detailed tweaks to a specific track, you'll want to come here. This will allow you to do all sorts of deep dive nerdy stuff, as well as some more basic things like applying EQ and compression. All of that can be found here. You also have your volume, mute and solo, and I'll go into all this in more detail. This is just a very brief overview of kind of the layout, the UI of Logic. Next, we have the quick help button. And I would recommend turning this on if this is your first time in Logic. Basically, the quick help is going to open this little box that tells you about anything you move your mouse over. So this is actually really helpful if you're a beginner because you can move over here. Okay, this is a track header. Um, if you're like, what's this? That's the rewind button. Um, this is the mute button, solo button, record enable. So all of this information, it just kind of gives you a little blurb about it. That's really helpful if you're learning. So I'll actually just leave this up for the duration of the video. Um, this next button is the toolbar. So this is going to enable a second set of tools and customizable buttons. I would avoid this for now, to be completely honest, because it's just more things you have to learn. Um, and better not to overwhelm yourself with too many buttons to start. Nothing, nothing in this toolbar is like exclusive to the toolbar. You can find all of this stuff in other areas. So it's just an extra little tool belt, basically. This next button is called Smart Controls. So this will change based on whatever instrument you have pulled up. And it's basically pre-routed, pre-assigned, really easy use buttons um, or knobs or anything like that. But once we get into loading instruments, I'll be sure to open the smart controls so you can see what's going on there. The next button is the mixer. Get out of here. Um, I'll move you somewhere else. I don't know. Um, it's kind of getting annoying, actually. I'll turn it off. So the mixer, if you're coming from an audio background or like live sound or that kind of thing, you'll feel really comfortable and at home here. Um, this is basically an audio mixer of your entire Logic session. So for those of you used to like moving faders and applying EQ and compression, this is going to let you basically deep dive on the audio and the sound of your project in one location. So all of your tracks that you create in your workstation area will come down here for further tweaking. So the next one here, the little, the little pencil looking thing, this is the edit page. And so this is going to let you further tweak whatever content you have. So if it's MIDI, like a like a virtual piano, virtual instrument, you can tweak the piano roll and the score down here. You can also use a step sequencer or a session player. Um, granted, you have to have a session player track pulled up to use that. Um, if you're using an audio track, let me add one. If you're using an audio track, 
then this will let you edit the audio, kind of zoom in on the waveform, all of that kind of stuff. So this is kind of for advanced editing. It's the editing page. Um, I'm going to pop over to the opposite side because these are more little panels that pop up in Windows. So this is the event editor. So every single thing, and I use thing very lightly, every single item within your session. That could be a region, that could be some audio, that could be a tempo change, anything at all ends up in your event window. Um, and so it's really, it's kind of a lot if you, if you don't need it. So I would recommend staying away from it. But if you really need to find like something or all of the same thing, the event window will help you there. This next one is a notepad. It's just notes. You can add stuff in here add stuff in here. Um, it's cool because you can do a project note or a track note. So this track note is specific to the track you have selected over here. So if I click, we'll just call this audio track. And then if I click on another track, which is not an audio track or not that track specifically, um, it'll be blank again because each track has its own note. So we'll say different note. And so now this instrument one, the note on that is different note. And then if you click on this other track, the note is audio track. It's just a notepad. It's, it's helpful. You have a full project note or track specific notes. This next window is a full deep dive in itself. This is the loop library within Logic. Logic comes preloaded. Granted, you have to install them, but it comes with a ton of free audio loops, um, all sorts of fun building blocks for songs. It has its own browser, so you can search by instrument or genre or stuff that you've liked in the past. All of that kind of stuff is in here. So if you need to get a song up and running really quickly or are looking for some nice flavors and colors to add, you can find all that here. This next one is the browser tab. So this will let you browse anything within your project or anything within your computer. So if you click all files, it's literally Finder within Logic. Um, that's really helpful if you're looking for specific like audio files or sound effects. So a lot of times I will have, you know, lots of third party sound effects and stuff in here and you can navigate to it, you know, directly without having to open Finder. You know, you can come through here and, and preview out sounds really quickly. And if you want to just drag them into your project, you can do that as well. Moving into the center here, we have a few different clusters of things. Some of these might feel familiar to you over here on the left. These are your transport controls. Now these transport controls relate directly to this little guy right here, and this is called the playhead. So this is actually where you are in your project. So Logic uses what's called linear media, which is over time. And basically wherever this playhead is, is where you are in your project. Like if you hit play right now, it's going to play from a specific spot and that's where the playhead is. Um, so if I hit rewind, it's going to move the playhead backwards. If I hit forward, it's going to move the playhead forward. If I hit this thing, it's going to take the playhead back to the beginning of the project. Go to beginning. If I hit play, it's going to play. Once you're playing, you can hit stop to stop. Um, record is going to record whatever you have record enabled. And, and I'll have an in-depth recording specific video to talk about that. I never use this one. I don't know why it's here. Um, it's called free tempo recording. I don't use it. In fact, they just, just turn it off. That is a, a fun little insider or intermediate tip. Uh, you can right click up here and customize everything. So the views are these areas on the side. So if you don't want to see the inspector tab, um, you can actually turn these things off. Same thing with transports, like you can <laughs> load it up with a bunch of stuff. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that. Um, so what I did, I didn't want to see that free tempo recording button. So I just came in here and turned it off. This next one right here is a really helpful tool and it's called the cycle range. And I have a whole video just dedicated to the crazy stuff that this can do. When this is turned on, the playhead will just keep cycling through a certain region. Um, this is really helpful if you want to just zero in on a section or you're jamming and you want like the same eight bar phrase played over and over. But if I hit play now, you'll notice the playhead jumps to the yellow section, the cycle range, and it will continue to just play through that cycle range. So now it just keeps looping on that little section. Um, you can turn it back off. 
You can click in this area anywhere to just make a new cycle range of any length that you want. And you can also click the cycle range directly to turn it on and off. You can also just click and drag and move the whole cycle range. So if you want to make sure it starts on one, you can drag the edges around. It's really customizable and you can do basically whatever you want with it. This middle section here is called the display and it displays all the important information about your project. So if you notice right now, we see what bar and beat we're on. We see our tempo and we see our time signature and key. But if you come up here, you can change it to all sorts of stuff. There's some preset ones like beats and project, um, beats and time. So I really like custom because you can put whatever you want. And if you right click up here and hit customize, you have this whole section for display and you can toggle any specific things on and off. Um, once you know a little bit more about kind of what you like and what your preferences are, you can customize to see exactly what you want. But if you need to change your tempo, the easiest way to do it is to come up here, make sure one of these has beats on it. You know, you could do beats in project large, and then you can just click and drag to change your project tempo or double click and type in the number you want. These over here are just another set of custom little controls. They're called modes and functions. The only one I really use here is a tuner because it's just helpful to have a tuner really quickly. Um, but again, you can customize all of this. And then these two are super important. This is the click and the count in. So if you're trying to play on time, you need to toggle this click on. So if I click it on, you'll then hear clicking. And that corresponds to whatever project tempo you have. So if this number is larger, that means it's gonna go faster, your song will be faster and you'll hear the click faster. The, the one directly to the side with the one, two, three, four, this is the count in. So if this is on, then say you want to start recording at measure three. I'll put my playhead there. If I hit record, it's going to back up a measure and then start recording at three. Just to give you as the musician or the talent, you know, the ability to be ready. Uh, so if I hit record now, it's going to back up and then start recording. Whereas if I just hit record normally with this off, it's going to start right at my playhead. So depending on what you want there, you know, you can have both of those options. Finally, this big knob right here is the master volume of your entire project. So if you just want the whole thing louder or softer, you can change it here. I hardly ever touch that personally because I feel you should just mix the levels within your project, but that is helpful if you just need it quieter or louder all of a sudden. Finally, you have this other little bar right here um, with, again, more tools. There's a uh, an overwhelming amount of tools within Logic. These right here toggle different views. So if you want the, uh, I don't even know what that's called, the live loops grid button. Um, I never use that. If you don't want to show your tracks area, you can do that. Um, this is automation. So any sort of change over time you want to do in your project, like turning the volume up in certain spots, that's what that is. This right here is flex. So this is kind of audio manipulation, if you will. So this will change... The, the speed of your project, if you want to do vocal tuning, all of that kind of stuff is in this area. All of these are more menus, more functions. Unless you're looking for something specific, I wouldn't go diving in here. Um, this button is called the playhead catch or the catch button. And this will just, if this is off, basically your playhead can leave the screen. So if I come over here, if I turn this off, it'll let the playhead leave basically. So <laughs> there goes the playhead, it's gone. Uh, if we go find it, it's still there, but it'll keep, you know, the playhead will keep going, but your screen stays where it is. If this is on, it'll always make sure your screen is on the playhead, which is what I prefer. Um, that way, you know, it's always there. So now it's on and as it gets close to the edge, it just scrolls for you basically. Um, so if you ever lose your playhead and can't find it, it could be because that is off. Um, so make sure that's on unless you don't want it on. These two buttons here are your tools. So you have a left click tool and a command click tool. And within the menus, if you want, you can also have a right click tool. There's also a setting you can change where you get a third tool for right click, but I prefer having a menu on right click. Um, so left click, I almost always have it as the pointer because that allows you to just have a mouse basically. And then the command click, if you hold command, it's the tool that you get when you hold command. So there's a ton of options there and that's a whole deep dive, um, but I prefer marquee. 
Um, it just lets you kind of do some bulk options like that. Snap, I need a region for this. And don't don't let this freak you out. I will, video two is all about regions and tracks and that kind of thing. So the snapping right here is how your regions interact with the workspace. So by default, it's on and it's smart, which means it'll kind of kind of snap to certain sections. So if you see here, it's a little more prone to stopping at beats or bars or basically important divisions or intervals within your session. If you turn this off, you can free slide it with no regard for personal space or anything like that. It just goes anywhere. Uh, that could be helpful if you're doing non-time-based stuff. So if you're just editing a podcast, working with audio that has no regard for time, you could turn that off. If you really want to get specific with it, you can click this and tell it exactly what to snap to. So if you want to snap to bar, then it's going to be these big chunky snaps to every single bar or measure in the project. Or you can do beat, which is just, you know, one, two, three, four, the beats. Um, or you can do division, which is a little more granular. I like smart because as you zoom in, the snapping gets more granular. But if you zoom out really far, it's easier to, you know, snap it to the, to the bar, if that makes sense. This drag right here just tells logic what happens if you drag two regions to overlap. Um, this is more this is more of an editing thing, so I won't get into that. This is your waveform zoom. So if you have an audio file, let me just. So if you have an audio file in here, you can click this to zoom in. And you can also click and drag this to tell it how much you want to zoom. And don't let this confuse you. It's not making your audio any louder or softer. It's just zooming in and out so you can see the waveform better. This button right here is going to vertically zoom your tracks to fill your entire window. So if I click that, now my two tracks are huge. They take up the whole window. If I unclick it, they go back to where they were. This button here is going to horizontally zoom so that your whole project fits in the window. So if I do that, it'll just zoom in on those regions. These are manual zooms over here. So if you just want to control that or control this, you can do that there. So that is the basics of the layout and UI in Logic Pro. My next video, Logic Pro 102, is going to be all about tracks and regions. Those are kind of the bread and butter of any sort of production or audio that you're working with. You're going to need tracks and regions. So be sure to check that out. I will have it right up here when it is live.